assembling several different types of apostolic teams right here in our midst. We're grateful there's, there's like three of them that are assembling right now. And we are grateful uh, to see the hand of God doing what it does. This particular team, these are soldiers that have been with us for a season. And um, the assignment, uh, one of the things the Lord has shown me is that we have been for a long time focusing on your kids' kids, our kids' kids. But the leaders themselves were still in the midst of not being challenged and given opportunities and being pushed. And so we had to repent or change our mind about that. So so tonight they are, and this weekend, they are under assignment uh, to perform or function on a different level. The word performance is not a curse word in the house. It's, it's, it's we expect a certain level, amen. Uh, as we are reaching into this dimension, we are watching, we are listening for some things, we are establishing some things to see. Father said, come and see as you assemble this, come and see. I want y'all to know that since the day that we announced uh, this conference and put a flyer out, we have seen, seen. The unseen, I'm not sure. But we've seen at least four major attacks of the enemy to get to this day. Major attacks. And um, when we did what Father told us to do as the sons of God, how many of you have seen The Wizard of Oz before? <laughs> Listen, it, you, you, you're afraid and you, this big image is making a lot of noise. But then we find that when the curtains are moved back, some man is back there operating. And making, that, that when, when you confront, you're going to find out that you're not dealing with giants at all. But you see, if you don't confront, then they remain what you think they are. God has called us in this hour to call some things into account even though he's giving us wisdom to choose our battles wisely. How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, what you're going to have to learn how to do is measure it, look at it, and determine if you get spoils from it. If I'm going to win some spoils here, the fight is on. But if there are no spoils, back away. The enemy is trying to draw you into some unnecessary battles. And a lot of times it's a distraction because there's something right in front of you that you're about to go through that the enemy doesn't want you to go through. A new season, a new dimension, a new level might be right in front of you. I remember the Lord told us a long time ago, he says, where Paul said, a great door is opened unto me and effectual, but there are many adversaries. And what dropped in our spirit immediately was those big automatic doors at Walmart or at the airport. They will not open until they sense your presence. Right? right? And so what the enemy does is he tries to keep you from getting to that door where it will open for you. So he makes noise. He tries to attack. And in your head, you're thinking about how big and how bad that problem might be. And the day is getting closer and closer. And you're stressing and you're afraid about all kinds of stuff that, that the enemy of fear has ministered to your mind. And then you finally muster up the strength and say, okay, we're going to fight. And when we get there, Emily, it's a little midget. 
I'm trying to tell some of y'all it's a midget. Quit saying, quit avoiding it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but quit avoiding it. Go and confront it. Deal with it. And you're going to find out it ain't got that kind of power. As a matter of fact, it was having nightmares about you. <laughs> Wondering why you didn't come earlier. Because it knows you have power. Come on now, yes, 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 yes. That's what's different. We got power. Amen. Tonight, I am so excited about. Uh, our first speaker, a daughter that I've watched just evolve with us, just got on track with us and just has grown with us because we're all growing. And, and I'm so grateful to see how she's kept the pace in spite of the pain that she faces in the natural, which I'm declaring in the name of Jesus. And it ceases in the name of Jesus. That the ministry of the Holy Ghost will be greater than the voice of the ministry of infirmity. May your body respond to the one with the strongest voice. So, uh, I'm grateful. She's a church mama. A real church mama. A, a daughter. I don't, I, listen, I'm not just pumping up. She's a daughter. She's one of my favorite people to talk to. Uh, she, she brings the joker out of me. She makes me pick. Amen. And uh, I just thank the Lord for her. She, she makes me playful yeah. with a gentle spirit, yes. a good person, yes. a good leader, yes. a good spiritual mother, yes. Yes. a good wife, yes. help me suitable to her husband, yes. 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 a good friend. faithful daughter. We're going to welcome her up tonight uh, to do workshop number one. And as she does this, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Stand to your feet. As a dignitary comes into the house. Just receive, extend your hands, Father. May we pull on the anointing and get everything we need from this girl, Lord. Speak to her in real time. Mess with her natural thinking. And let her just totally trust and soar in your presence with revelation. Let her be surprised by the Holy Ghost tonight. And we just thank you, Lord God, for what's about to be released in this place. We bless her. We cover her in the blood. That the enemy cannot attack her, touch her. Now or after she ministers. When the anointing lifts, her body will not pay a penalty for it. Because as the glory comes on, strength comes on. So Father, bless her. <laughs> bless her. Let her flow. We receive her. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, 
apostles. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you glory. Yes. And I give you praise. Yes. For all the wonderful things that you have done in my life, God. And in the life of all these people that's on the sound of my voice on tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, as I come before them, God. For what the Holy Spirit has given unto me in the name of Jesus. By permission of the topic that we're talking on tonight. God, I bless your name. Yes. I bless your name, Jesus. And I bless your name, God. Yes. We say, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, have your way. Have your and do what you want to do, God. Yes. Lord, Lord, as you want to do it, God. Yes. I said, have your way, God. Yes. In my life. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. And my soul. Tell you all the time I'm not sad about it. I have no sad song and no sad stories. Amen? Amen. Because God has been too good. He's been too good. He's made too many ways. We thank God for the great push. Amen. From our apostle tonight. That was right before me. I thank God for Apostle Daniel Francis. Amen. His wife, wonderful wife, prophets, Cynthia Francis. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the Lynn being our miss on tonight. Bishop. And Pastor Cheryl, all the way from Livingston, Texas. And when she texted me and said, uh, I don't know why we're going to be late. we stuck in traffic. I said, God, move the traffic. Because I want to see my sister and brother. And thank God they made it. Amen. I thank God for everyone in the household tonight. God is doing great things. And whereby we ought to be glad. Amen. 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 I thank God. I'm encouraged tonight. I say I'm encouraged tonight. Amen. I feel like going on. Yes. Amen. We're going to begin. Our topic is the importance of discipleship. And I pray to God that you have pen and paper. Amen. To keep notes. Amen. Yes. If you don't, they'll give you a pencil. <laughs> and I have a whole table right here. You can get a paper. Take notes on your devices. It's very important. I thank God that I've learned down through the years that if you keep the notes, you go back and you study. Right. And the Lord will reveal even more to you than what which you heard from the speaker. Amen? Amen. So y'all are to cherish the word of God. Because I tell people all the time, if, if you don't have it on the inside of you, you can't, it can't rise up Come when on. you need to. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. My topic, the importance of discipleship. The first word I'm speaking of is out of Colossians 2 and 7. And it says, rooted and built up in him. Remember, we're learning about discipleship tonight. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith as he had been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Jude 1 and 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, 
Now to him, 24, Jude 1, 1 and 24, now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And my last scripture for right now is 1 Corinthians 12 and 12, and it reads, For as the, as the body is one, and had many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. In all, all this is saying that we have to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Amen. You have to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. And that's the first step that we have to teach this, this, in discipling. Is that it's important that you be rooted and grounded on a good foundation. Amen. And we know that our foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen. Discipleship means a state of a disciple or follower in doctrines and precepts. Where truth triumphs over faith. Yes. yes. Amen. Truth triumphs over faith. Over facts. I'm sorry. Over facts all the time. Amen. We may have our ideas and it may be. It may sound good. But guess what? There is a truth that triumphs over that fact. Amen. And that's the word of God. Amen. A disciple is a learner, a scholar, one who receives instructions from another, a follower, an adherent to the doctrines of another. Christians are called his disciples as they profess to learn and receive his doctrine and precept. Amen? Amen. Amen. I thank God for the topic tonight. As I studied it and the more I studied it, I put some stuff together. And you know, people that people are, that are students of the word and people that bring forth the word, you know, God will give you something and then and you think you got it. <laughs> and then he changed he change that thing all the way around. And then you got to start all over again. You know, but I just thank God how he messes with my mind with this topic. Because I, I know that it's important that we know about disciples. Because guess what? Disciple is a follower. Yes. A follower of Jesus Christ. So it's important. We have very uh, a crowd in tonight that pretty much have a foundation. That's been in God, amen. And I thank God tonight I'm talking to people that know about what I'm talking about. Amen. So amen, just say amen. 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 I, I, I was told that I say a lot of amen, but I, I find out that if you don't say amen, they might not say amen, so I got my own, amen. <laughs> I got my own, amen. amen. <laughs> I'm just saying, amen. amen. We find out who disciples, leaders, mature, seasoned believers, we can't put uh, disciples in the hand of a novice and of a babe in Christ. Amen. Yeah, so there yeah, are yeah. the people that, that disciples people are people that are leaders yes. and they mature and they season. Because yeah. if you don't be careful, you have somebody, they have a whole little crowd going against everything that you're trying to teach. Come on, and man. you're trying to preach. The next thing you know, you got a whole big mess going on. Amen. Yeah, so it's very important that we learn as disciples Amen. That we find we learn to follow and follow those that are telling the truth. Amen. Those that are telling the word of God. Amen. It's important that you know the word of God. That's why it's important that you know the word for yourself. Amen. So that when you hear something kind of strange, it sounds sound like you, you do like the Corinthians, they go home and they what they did, they checked it out. If Paul said something that they didn't uh, agree with or they didn't understand, they went home and, and studied it. And that's important. Yeah. Very important. Amen. Amen. I'm not no hooper. So don't work for the word. Don't look for no hoop. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm just glad I'm able to stand. Y'all don't know. I pray in that corner right there. All right, mm. Come on and tell her. Hey, God. Yes, I said, God, you know my way over here. I said, God, I don't want to sit down. I want to stand up before your people yes. and declare yes. the goodness of the Lord. And I thank God here. Yes. Give me yes. strength. He come back. Yes. He gave me the strength yes. I need. Right about now, if y'all only knew. Huh? If y'all only knew. Yes. And we talked about who disciples. Now we're going to talk about who are disciples. I talked about who disciples. Remember who disciples. Now we're going to talk about who are disciples. Yes. New converts. Uh -huh. Babes. Don't get happy. Then everybody. Because we must stay equipped in what we are about to teach. Wait a minute, I'm in the wrong place. It's very important, in fact, to discipleship. Is to be considerate. Why are they being discipled? Mm -hmm. So why are you discipling people? Remember, we are disciples. When the apostle was up here, you being discipled. Mm -hmm. Amen. When y'all was up here speaking in tongue and, and, uh, and giving the, uh, the uh, interpretation, we're being discipled. Mm -hmm. 
Don't ever think that you don't have to be discipled. Right. Amen. Because if you're going to be a, a saint of God, a child of God, you are a follower of God, you are a disciple. Amen. Amen. And as I said, babes and new converts, but remember, we all are being disciples. Tonight, even as we sit under the sound of our voice and anybody else's voice, we are being disciples. Thank you. You're getting it. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about the foundation of discipleship. The foundation of discipleship. That's what something is built upon. This building had to have a foundation. Amen. Before all these pretty walls and everything, you see now in the front, they have a foundation built up under this, all of this. And guess what? It has to be able to hold the capacity of whatever they put on top of that foundation. Right. Yeah. 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 Amen? Yeah. So guess what? You got to be very careful of your foundation, yes. what you build up on. Yes. Be very, very careful. As the song said, be very sure that your anchor holds and it gives a solid rock. And the rock is Jesus tonight. The foundations of discipleship, teach them when, you, when, you, when you're teaching, when you're talking to yourself too. Teach them about the change that has taken place in their lives. They have a new heart, according to Ezekiel. They have been given a new heart. They don't love impartiality anymore. They don't talk about people and kill them out anymore. They don't go in the store and take something they ever paid for anymore because of a new heart that they have. Your foundation is sure. You have to be important. You have to realize the importance that in your foundation be sure. Amen? Amen? It's of utmost importance that disciples are built upon a sure foundation. It's important that the foundation we stand on is Jesus Christ. All of the grounds is sick and sand, y'all. You can put your trust in man if you want to. He's going to fail you. You can put your trust in your friend. They're going to turn their back on you. But I promise to tell you tonight that if you be, let your foundation be built upon Jesus Christ, he's a sure foundation. He'll never leave you, and neither will he forsake you. When your heart is broken into pieces, he will mend your broken heart. Build up on a sure foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Disciples have to be well versed in the word of God. Yes. A student of the word. Amen. You have to love the word of God. Amen. Not just read it. Amen. Not just listen to people putting it out there. But you have to become a lover for the word of God. Amen. To be well versed in the word of God. So that when you tell somebody something, you have the word to back it up. Because nowadays... Amen. People, you can tell people what you want to about God and about church. But people want to hear what the word of God say. Yeah. I know these seasoned people and people that's in this house tonight, you want to hear what the word of God say first about what people are saying. Yeah. I'm like that. You can tell me if you want to, but guess what? I'm going to go search it. Mm-hmm. Especially if my spirit is not in agreement with it. Amen. So be careful of what your foundation is on tonight. When a person is discipled, they are being taught about Christ. How that he is in them, and they are in him. Amen? Amen. We have to be in Christ, because guess what? He's in you. He's in you. He have took a board in your life. And I tell people all the time, I'm not regretting. I got saved at the age of 17, and God is a keeper. I am 63 years old. You can do the math. He's a keeper. A sure foundation. I said a sure foundation. I thank God for what I'm built upon. I thank God for the truth tonight. I thank God that I know, amen, right from wrong. I know good from evil. I know sin, my God, from pleasing my flesh. And people, I'm going to make a, take a little break. You can't save this. Okay. Teach the disciples. Don't try to save this because you can't. You taste the Holy Ghost on the inside of you to take, to be able to control this spirit. This, 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 this little fellow here that we love to pamper him up. Love to go to the beauty shop, the nail shop, yeah. and fix it up and got nice clothes, just name brand, no name brand, whatever. But it's not, you can't say it. You can, you can really, you can beautify it if you want to. But I've come to tell you tonight, your, your, your thing that you need to focus on is being built up in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have to teach people in discipleship, we talk about foundation still, how to combat against the devil. Because as the apostle said, and as you may know, you know that he will come after you. Amen? Mm-hmm. He, he been coming after me for a minute now. But I'm still strong. Yeah. I'm still pushing. 
I still come to let him know that he cannot rule, he cannot reign in this life of mine. I stop by to let you know that he can't rule in your life either. You have to realize that you are saved, surely saved, good saved, sanctified saved. Amen? And don't be ashamed about it. Amen? Amen. We have to know that. I love telling people I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm, and like my husband say, I'm saved for real. I'm, I'm saved for real. Amen. 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 I just thank God tonight. Amen. Now we're going to talk about the purpose for discipleship. All right. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, thanks for the prompt. Uh, yeah, for real. Here. Amen. <laughs> Our purpose for discipleship is to teach the importance of kingdom living. Amen. Amen. People don't realize that we are in a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You may live on the north side of town and I may live on the south side of town. You may live in another little city outside of this city, another state. But guess what? We all are in the kingdom of God. Amen. Why are we in the kingdom of God? Because we all are the children of God. Amen. Amen. And that's where he reigns and that's where he lives. So that's where we should abide also. Amen. 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 We ought to teach the importance of being kingdom builders. Yes. Kingdom builders. It's not just about you. You got to let somebody know about Jesus. Amen? Amen. You got to let somebody know about Jesus. Amen. We have to teach the importance of their first calling. And our first calling is that we should be holy. holy. Thank you. Holy. Amen. Holy. Holy means set apart for the master's use. I've been clean and I've been set apart for God. It doesn't matter what I want to do. It doesn't matter what my friends tell me to do. I have been set apart for Jesus Christ. It's very important that you let people know that. Amen. To teach that the kingdom of God is relational. And, and Apostle pushes that so much. To teach them part of building a relationship with our fellow brothers. is important. It's very important. Because sometimes you're going through things and you just need somebody to, not even, they don't have to give you an answer for the what you're going through. Yeah, just, yeah. just call them and say, hi, I'm going through, pray for me. And a person of, of understanding will know, I don't have to know exactly what you're going through, but you can tell me if you want to. But I'm going to pray. Amen. And I'm going to pray for you. Amen. Because you took out the time, as the song said, somebody prayed for me. Yeah. It took the time to pray for me. And I'm so glad. You ought to be glad that God, that somebody prayed for you. I thank God. Back in 76 when God saved me, somebody was praying for me. And I thank God. Amen. 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 Another purpose that we have for discipleship is, is that to teach the importance of building according to the pattern out of Hebrew 8 and 5. That's important. We have to build according to how Jesus Christ said for it to be built. You can't put your ideas how you feel about it and what you think about it. Because guess what? If we put our ideas, what we think, and how we feel about it, it's going to be a mess, y'all. Yeah. A big mess. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. So we have to build it according to the pattern. How you find out about the pattern? Is in the word. That's the only way you're going to find out about it. So you got to go in there and study it. Amen? Amen. And we ain't talking about that tabernacle building. We're talking about your tabernacle. Amen. For you to go in there and build your tabernacle Amen. according to the pattern. Amen? Yes. Amen. 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 We have to teach them the importance that they have been forgiven for all sins. They past sins, you've been forgiven if you repent it. The present one that you did right before you sitting in this chair. In this, in this church, some of y'all, and before you walk through the door, if you did, or before you or as you went through your day, you if you repented, you've been forgiven. Amen. And guess what? He he even forgives all of our future sin. And some people don't understand it, they don't believe That's it. That's right. Uh -huh. But Jesus Christ died. Yes. He died for he, he gave us eternal life. He ain't dying no more. So guess what? Whenever you sin, he's gonna forgive you. God is a forgiving God. Amen. Don't allow people to point their fingers at you and say, you know, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh-huh, uh-huh, I know too. You know what I know? I serve a God that is a forgiving God. <laughs> Amen. We're going to teach, we have to teach it and push it. Amen. We have to teach the importance that they must be witnesses to others. And they call it, we have a discipleship class, and they call it spiritual multiplication. I tell you, you tell somebody. And then they tell somebody. And then they tell somebody. And it's like a domino effect. Amen. We have to be witnesses. These days, people want to keep it to themselves. Mm -hmm. Used to be back in the day, man, you, 
people get saved, they be so happy. Amen. They be out of the neighborhood. They be in the store, at the beauty shop, wherever they were, their family gathered. Somebody know that their life had been changed. Amen. But now we got so quiet. We got so quiet. Yeah, yeah. Just like right now, we got so quiet. Amen. Amen. Somebody gonna say amen. amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. Amen. <laughs> Disciples are taught the true principles of the kingdom. Principles is the first thing. Amen. And we ought to teach it. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's very important, people of God, that you know about how this thing got started. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Read up on it. Go into the word of God and learn about how my, my God, your life in Christ got started. Amen? Amen. 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 Discipleship. Kingdom principles, y'all. We said that they ought to be taught true principles. So we get ready to give you some kingdom principles. Amen. Take note. Okay, all right. Psalm 24 and 8 says, Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, yes. and the Lord mighty in battle. Yes. Our king is Jesus. Yes. That's our first thing. We find out that we got to live holy. We find out our sins are forgiven, but guess what? We find out that Jesus Christ is our king. Yes. And God will never take it from me. That's a word from the pastor, and I had it from notes, and I saw it. God will never reside where he can't reign. Mm. Oh, That's right. If he can't rule, Amen. and he can't reign, and he can't tell you how, and he can tell you what, he's not going to reside there. I'm telling you right now. Amen. Amen. He ain't got to reside in anybody yeah, that's, yeah. that's disobedient. Mm -hmm. Anyone listen to what he has to say, amen? Right. He rules. He reigns. Like children get mad sometimes at mom and dad. They tell them to do and don't do. Don't go there and don't go here. They don't understand it, but it's for their good. Yeah. It's for their good. In the long run, they will see it, amen? Amen. 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 Psalms 23 and 5, point B said, Thou anointest my head with all, and my cup run it over. We must respect. They must receive that they are possessed. Mm -hmm. Got that from my apostle, y'all. Mm -hmm. Not a demon possessed. Been yes. a, 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 a possessed with the spirit of God. Once God comes into our lives, you are possessed. Yes. Yeah, you. Yeah, yes. you know you're possessed. Yes. Amen. Yes. People think we got a devil working in us. Yes. But I'm going to stop by to let them know. And I stop by to let you know so you can let them know. Amen. That we are not possessed with a demon. Right. But we've been possessed by the spirit of God. Yeah. And I thank God for his yeah. anointing. Yeah. Amen. His anointing. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, his anointing. Yeah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all that he has done for me. Yeah. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Your soul ought to cry out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Kingdom principles, y'all. Luke 14, 26 says, If any man come to me, and hate not, that's a lot of, that's a strong word, Jesus. But Jesus said it, y'all. I didn't say it. If any man come to me and hate not his father, hate not his mother, what? hate not his wife, what? hate not his children, and hate not his brethren and sisters, oh. yeah, and even his own life also, yeah. your life too, man. You too, amen. amen. <laughs> if you don't hate him, he cannot be my disciple. That's Luke 14, 26, for those that didn't get it the first time. Read it for yourself in a different translations. Amen. You have to be sold out. We have to be sold out. Yes, yes. I'm telling you, it's very important yes. that we be sold out for Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke 6 and 43, children for a good tree, bringing not forth corrupt fruit. Neither do a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. We must be bearers of good fruit. Yes. You find that in Galatians. It tells you about the fruit of the spirit. We taught up on Bible class on Wednesday. Amen. The products of the spirit life. Amen. Those things come and it, it flourishes in our life as we go on in God. Amen. The fruit of the spirit should be very alive in our lives. And there's nine of them. But we know there's more to it than that. Amen. amen. And it covers, amen, our lives. It covers what we need, amen, for us to be disciples of Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm a disciple, y'all. Y'all go here tonight. Off and on, but I'm so glad to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. Yes. John 13, 34 tells me that a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. He said it twice. Anytime Jesus Christ or is mentioned twice in the Bible, that means that emphasis is put up on it. Amen? Amen. Emphasis is put up on it. Yes. So he said twice, mm -hmm. twice, that you love one another. <clears throat> 
also love one another. We must operate in the love of God. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 And when you got time, not now, you put it in your notes. I want you to read Leviticus 19 and 18 and see the difference in the, in the two verses between John 13 and 34 and between Leviticus 19 and 18. Amen? Amen. Luke 18 and 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We have to teach that they have to be prayerful. It's important that we be prayerful, and it's important that we let people know that it comes to God, it's very important to be prayerful. Prayerful is a communicate that we have with God. And we could tell him about it. Some things we can tell God about it and he won't tell nobody else. Some things we want to we don't want to utter to people but we can utter it to our God. And I thank God that he has ears to listen. I don't care what time of the night or morning it is. Our God listens. Amen? Amen. Principles, y'all. Principles. You got to be possessed. You got to be sold out. You got to be a bear of good fruits. You got to operate in God's love. You have to be prayerful. That word Psalms 119.11 says, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. We must be a student of the word. Yeah. Study. 2 mm -hmm. Timothy 2 and 15. You have to be a student of the word. So it will be in there. Like Craig will say, it's in there. When you test and try it's come, you can go in there and pull it out. In your, what do they call it? The mem memoir? Uh -huh. Go in there. Amen. You may not need it right now, but you're going to need it. Amen? Amen. And that is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Another principle is 2 Timothy 2 and 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Amen. You must have godly character. Yes. You must have godly character. Amen. You must have it. We're taught. That our character will take us further than our gift. Amen. Amen. You can sing like a bee if you want to and like a bird if you want to. And have not character. Come on. It don't mean a thing. Amen. Come on. Amen. It's very important that we have godly character. Yes, Amen. Principle. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed. Be not conformed. Keep that in mind to this world. But be he transformed. Keep that in mind. Yes. By the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. As we must have God in character, we must be disciplined. Yes. We have to be. It's very important that you be disciplined. Amen. In Proverbs 25 and 8 talks about a person that can't rule his own spirit. It's like a city without walls. You have no control over it. Just do what they want to do. Say what they want to say. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, it was in there. That's why it came out. Uh, oh, I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. It came out. Amen? Amen. So be careful. Be disciplined. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 17. This is one that a lot of people might kind of con contradict it, but guess what? Just give me, give me a minute. I'm going to tell you what the Spirit says. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for their watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Yes. For that is unprofitable to you. Yes. This this subject, this spirit, I mean this scripture is telling you that the people that is over you, whether it's a pastor, apostle, teacher, whatever they are, or the people that is discipling you, you have to obey them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because you we don't put novice over people. Mm -hmm. Novice can't teach people, you can't disciple people. No. We're talking about sound people, right. sober people, seasoned people. Amen. As they teach you, you have to be obedient. They use that scripture a lot for pastor's anniversary. But I'm here to tell you tonight, it can stand for you as a disciple of. That's the word we made up because I tried to look in the dictionary there and see. <laughs> disciple of. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I have the right to do that upon. I can make my own word. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yeah. So it makes, it makes you, you must be accountable and obedient. Accountable and obedient. <laughs> Hebrews 5. I'm almost through, y'all. <clears throat> Hebrews 5 and 14. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age, yeah. even those yes. who by reason yes. 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 Whew, of use, I'm hot. Uh, of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Mm -hmm. Strong meat. Full yeah. age means mature. You got yeah. to be mature. You got to grow up. Yeah. You got to grow up. It's important. 
You know why it's important? Because I hate to think of uh, my baby, like my head, my first child, Destiny, and at 14 years old, she's still on Pampers, and still got a nursing. Something is wrong. Amen. So if you are, if you are a baby in Christ, that's understandable. But if you are grown in Christ, those, those things need to be laid aside. You need to mature. You need to be able to take correction and walk in obedience. Amen? Amen. you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We must be fully equipped, y'all. Yeah. Equip, equip how in the word of God. Have it on our whole armor. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yes. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Malachi 3 and 19. Dang, right. I put the wrong thing. Because I know it's not 319, Malachi 310. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that there may be meat in my house. Yeah, I'm teaching all things. All the, I'm teaching all the importance of discipleship. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Right. yes indeed. Woo! And me now, here with say the Lord of hosts. If, when God say if, okay. he have an if but principle. Uh, yeah. And if he say if, you better pay attention. See if I will not open you the windows of heaven Amen. and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Amen. We must be cheerful givers, y'all. Amen. Amen. In my closing tonight, I want to recognize that the fivefold ministry is present in this house tonight. Apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and pastor, and bishop. We, that we believe in, I want to, I want to, I want to close tonight to let you know that we believe, uh, every one of us, we believe in the fivefold ministry. Yeah. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, we have been given the authority to legislate mm -hmm. by the operation of the Holy Ghost against any, any acts or works of the enemy. Mm -hmm. So if he try to come at you, legislate. Mm -hmm. Call on your angels. Mm -hmm. He said, I will, I will let my angels, I will discharge my angels, discharge my angels that they may watch over you and keep you from all evil. So if the enemy try to come in after you legislate, yeah. Call on your, your angel. Amen? Amen. As disciples of Jesus Christ, don't it make you feel mighty glad to be able to experience the manifestation of God in your life? Yeah. Amen. When the world want to take a gun and take your life. Yeah. Amen. When they take people's lives, amen, go on a rampage, what would make a person go in a school and kill all these kids? Amen. We thank God that we have, we have sound minds. Yeah. That we could think better than that. Most so, Amen. Amen. I'm provoked to still be with David. When David said, how good and how pleasant it is, amen, for brother and sister well in unity. I thank God tonight for the unity that's in this house. I thank God for the spirit that was in this. That is not was, but is in this house on tonight. Amen. amen. I have a Q&A. Do we have to do the Q&A or is it another one? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anybody got number one besides Bishop? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody know the answer to number one? Cynthia? Yeah. Disciples are followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. So everybody that have the paper and have not filled it, disciples are followers of Jesus Christ. Someone have number two? Hold up. Okay, I'm okay. Don't hold up. Amen. Amen. Number two, the first calling of a disciple is to be holy. Holy. Holy is the answer. Amen. A disciple must be a Miss Lynn, Miss Evelyn, please pray with me. Who else, I beg you? Who else? Amen. Cynthia? Amen. A disciple must be a student of the word. Number four. Somebody have number four. Forgiveness. Amen. We have been forgiven of all our sins, past, present, and future. Remember that. And number five. Jesus, I'm help y'all. Jesus is the ruler or the king of our kingdom. Amen? Amen. He rules and he reigns. Remember, the importance of discipleship is that we teach people, amen, the principles of the kingdom. Amen. I thank y'all on tonight. 
Amen. Amen.